So, you want to know how a Twix is made? Well, you've come to the wrong place because this is a video for Kit Kats. Hey guys, welcome back to Touch by Kai. I'm Kai and Tay. We're back once again taking a look at how to make a motion graphic intro once again in Blender 3.0.0. <laughs> Evie, hello, how are you? How's your day been so far? I never asked you how your day's been, but how's your day been? Um, first things we're going to do is because uh, this is going to be a like flat graphic kind of motion graphic kind of thing going on here. We need to go ahead and grab our camera, hit Alt-G to clear the location and hit alt r to clear the rotation now it's inside of our cube so to fix that we hit g and then y to move the camera backwards and it did not the rotation did not take so rx and then 90 on our numpad so 9 and 0 rx then 9 0 on your numpad hit enter to confirm that there you go and now we can go ahead and select the default cube and hit delete that is very unfortunate for him today so you can grab the lamp as well hit delete on that hit zero on the numpad to go into the camera's view so you can see what the camera sees and hit shift a i'm going to search for a text object now this text object is not visible because it's laying down so hit r then x and then on your numpad hit nine zero and then hit enter to confirm that rotation on the uh, on the x-axis by 90 degrees and then we can hit s to scale this bad boy down go to the text tab on the right hand side and change the horizontal alignment from left to center nice Cool. Now we can open up the font drop down, hit this little folder icon and choose a font that you have on your computer somewhere, which I'm going to do right now. And hopefully we're going to go ahead and look for da, 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 da. one of these fonts looks pretty decent to me. If I can, hmm, maybe we can do impact. Impact might be good. I just dragged it to my other monitor so I can go to some other folders. Um, Let's do... Let's do impact. Impact is a nice, decent, like regular font. All right, cool. So this is impact. Hit S to scale this bad boy up a little bit. Um, and I want to change the Y axis. So we'll change the offset on the Y axis to negative uh, 0.2. Hit S to scale this bad boy up and hit tab to delete all of that. And we shall type in, um, let's see, we'll just type in intro. I mean, I guess. I mean, we can just touch by, uh, do tutorial instead of that. Nice. Um, now, what I want to do is I want to, I don't want to be flat motion graphic, actually. I want it to be like just a, like a regular kind of intro motion kind of thing. So let's go ahead and hit extrude. We'll add some extrude value to this, like maybe just a little tiny bit, not that much. Um, maybe by point, point 0.15, point 0.15. Yeah, sure. Now, because I want this outside text to be different than the ones that's to, than the front facing, so the edges, I want all the side pieces, so the, the top, the side, the bottom, and the other side, to all be a different color than the front-facing part of the text. So let's hit Shift-D to duplicate the text, and then right-click that to cancel the movement. We'll go ahead and drop the extrude value down by 1. So uh, just click the little button to the left on the extrude value by 1. And then we'll go ahead and hit the, uh, the depth up a little bit. So we'll turn the depth up a little bit by... Just a little tiny bit. So we'll just click the arrow one time. Uh, we need to actually pull this back one more. So the extrude value goes down by one more. So now you can see that we have two different things going on here. This is kind of like a rounded beveled edge, which looks really cool. And we can go ahead and turn the resolution up or down, depending on what you want to do. I'm actually going to turn it down, maybe for today's tutorial. I might uh, click it on one or something. Hmm. Maybe just, maybe we'll just do zero. Okay, cool. That's fine. Um, nice. So with that done, we can now have two different colors for the uh, text. So let's go ahead and uh, hit this little drop down and select material. And then we can make the outside ones. We can make, go to rendered viewport shading, by the way. Hit this little uh, button up at the top to change to rendered so you can see exactly what it's going to look like uh, when you render the scene. Now, with the, the surface, I'm going to change this from principal BSDF to emission. And now you can see the edges of the text kind of light up a little bit, which is kind of cool. But why don't, actually, I want to take that back. I, I want to make this principal BSDF again. Change that back. And then the, the, the front facing text. We'll hit new, and then we'll change this one to the emission uh, like that, which looks really cool. Nice. Now, I want to actually duplicate the outside one again. So let's go back to solid viewport shading so we can see what we're doing. Right-click to duplicate the outside uh, text, and then we shall do the same exact thing again, but we'll change the extrude value so it's even further down, so it's like a little strip like that. Just a little strip across the text. And then I will go ahead and change the depth up by one. So it like pokes out of that. 
Now I want to change this to be an emission material as well. So we'll drop, grab the drop down color and make that also the same color of emission as the other one. But it's too thick still. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to the text tab and change the extrude value down a little bit more like that maybe. And we we'll might maybe turn the depth down to like, no, that's way too low. What am I doing? Um, let's do 1.015. Yeah, 0.015 looks decent. There you go. Nice. Now what I want to do with the gray text, so the gray uh, layer. I want to make this uh, more shiny. So we'll turn the specular all the way up, the roughness almost all the way down, the metallic all the way up. And then we need to go ahead and go to this main tab here, second uh, tab from the top, and then uh, check on sub, uh, sub uh, screen space reflections, and also maybe bloom. We'll, we'll do something with bloom a little bit later, but for now we'll just turn it on. So now you can see we have some nice reflections going on, but I don't want this to be white. Um, so I want this to be a color. So we'll change the emission color to like a, I don't know, a color, like maybe a yellow, maybe, maybe a purple. Well, pink look kind of good. Eh, we'll do purple. Um, okay, cool. Now we can turn the we can turn the strength up as well if you want to, but we don't have to. Um, but yes, yeah, so we have that looks good. I want to drop the color of the world down. So we'll go to the world tab here, change the color from gray all the way to black. Hit zero to go back into the camera's view, and now you can see we have this nice text. But they're all three separate things. So to move them all together, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and hit uh, Shift A, and we'll search for a empty, and then select plain axis. Now we have this empty here. I'm going to go ahead and drag a box over top of all of our text objects, um, and then not the empty. Hold down Shift, and then select the empty afterwards. Then hit Control P, and set parent to object. And now you can see when I grab this uh, empty that the entire text object moves together. Very cool stuff. Now I want to rotate this by selecting the empty and double tapping R on our keyboard like that. Uh, hitting S to scale it down a little bit. And I want to make this less shiny. So let make that, let's grab that shiny uh, portion and make it a little less shiny because it's kind of crazy right now. Actually, wait, you know, maybe we could make it, maybe it's a little too metallic. Yeah, that's the problem. A little too metallic there. You can't really tell where the letters end and begin on some of them. So let's turn the metallic down a little bit, just a little tiny bit. Um, there you go. Now, I don't like this purple color. And also, I'm going to go to the, the first tab here and go down to color management and change it from filmic to standard. Um, and then we'll go back to the main tab, change the uh, strength value up. So it looks kind of white, but like it's actually emitting purple. But I want to change the color maybe to something different. Oh, that's, that, that doesn't look good with the uh, standard. Maybe back on filmic for that, for a green. It depends on what color you're using. It looks kind of weird sometimes depending on what color it is. We do like a light green or like, huh, like a light blue like that, like a steel blue. That looks really cool, actually. Um, okay. Um, now, we're going to need to also maybe change the angle. Um, no, I mean, that's fine, I guess, like this. All right, cool. Now, now the, the, the only, thing I want, only thing I want to do with this is I want to um, rotate it like this. So, I want to do that. I want to have it come up and then rotate. So, for the animation, let's go ahead and change our start frame to zero. And then go to the zero frame. Um, we can go ahead and with the empty selected, I want to go to actually first we can change the amount of frame rate by going to this tab right here that says the output properties tab, go to frame rate and changes from 24 to 60. So it's nice and smooth like butter. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and uh, go to maybe frame 20, hit I location, and then go back to the zero frame, hit G and then double tap Z, and then move it straight on down out of the camera's view. Don't worry about the bloom. The bloom is only visible to us because we can we can see this this part still. But when you render it, it'll look just like this. So there won't be any bloom. Um, but yeah, so hit I, location. Now, uh, if we play this, you can see it comes up like that. Boom. But it stops too quickly. So what I want to do here is I want to um, make it so that on frame like 30, hit I, location. And then on frame 20, we'll pull it back to maybe frame 10 actually. And then we'll hit G, double tap Z. To move it down a little bit so it has a little some some room to go then hit i location so that's some room to like slide up like that so that's kind of cool right um nice um now what i want to do now is i want to make it flip so or rotate rather so maybe about on frame 50 so ooh, ooh, like right there the sound effects really help guys so hit i uh, insert a rotation keyframe and then on 60 hit uh, r and then double tap z again and then we'll flip it to about right there maybe hit i rotation so now when we play this, you can see it does like that, which looks really cool. 
and then we can go ahead and continue that animation on uh, frame 80 hit R then double tap uh, then double tap Z move it to about right there hit I rotation I can see we can play it does like that and the last thing I want to do is on frame maybe 130 hit R double tap Z and then move it to about the place where it began hit R rotation nice so it looks like this um, which is an issue because it kind of does like a weird little rotation thing that I, that I don't really like so maybe we can get rid of 80 actually yeah there we go so 80 looks wait maybe 60 oh, we can get rid of 62 okay so we don't need any of those okay let's just do the, the first one so uh on frame 50 it's rotated like that and then we rotate it basically the same exact way so it just rotates around in a circle which is very cool nice um but i want to kind of ease into a slow down stop so on frame 190 i'll hit i rotation and then on frame 130 we'll go back and then move it back a little bit so r double tap z and then move it this way um then hit i rotation so now we when we play it looks like this rotate and slows to a stop but the problem is it does that weird like change the angle thing you know what i mean because we're rotating on the z axis instead of moving our camera instead so an easier way to do that would probably just be to go ahead and then uh insert a keyframe right there so i rotation and then we just move the 30 keyframe back like that yeah so now it's slow so stop genius now so that we, have, we have that done now the last thing i want to do is uh, maybe change the in frame to 200 so that it'll zoom out so right here hit i rotation actually no no not rotation i location and then we can go to frame 200 and then hit g double tap z and then move it straight up out of the camera i location so now when we play this it looks like this and uh, it loops which is nice so it comes up spins around leaves nice i do want it to maybe do something else here so i want to go ahead and make the camera move a little tiny bit maybe not the camera maybe move the empty so let's go ahead and um if we had a song we can make like pulse to the song which would be kind of cool but that's not what this video is about so i just want to make a, something with some nice like shiny text where the text was the uh focus of it so i want to make this like the text shake a little bit so let's go ahead and, uh drag our window into two by hitting this little uh putting this little our cursor up into the top left corner until it turns into a plus and then clicking and dragging splitting our window into two hit this little button right here and change to the shader editor get uh drag this away because we'll need that uh and now with the empty Actually, not, not the shader editor, not the shader editor, what am I saying? The graph editor, I apologize. So with the empty selected, let's go ahead and open the tab up, hit modifiers, and add a modifier of noise. Now when we play this, you can see that it now shakes back and forth very vigorously, like it's trying to shake some ketchup that's been in the refrigerator for 17 days. We're going to go ahead and uh, change the scale to 5, change the strength to 0 0.1, maybe. Um, that looks good. Maybe the scale to 10, actually. Eh, no, that's 100. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> wait, wait. Scale to 10. There we go. That looks better. All right, cool. Scale to 10. Now we're going to drop this down. Select Y location. Actually, we're going to select X location. Hit this little copy button that you see right here. Copy. Then go to Y location. Hit paste. And then the only thing we're going to do is so it's not on the same exact, like, so it's not moving at the same time. We're going to change the offset to a random value. Just click and scroll it to a random value. So I have it on 144. Then on Z, hit the paste. Then scroll it to a random value, the offset. Just scroll, just flick your mouse into Narnia. And then we'll do the same thing with the rotation, paste, and then we shall go ahead and I'm gonna do like, you can do negative values, you can do positive values, it does not matter. But yeah, so we're gonna do whatever, just change the offset so it's not the same thing. Paste, offset, change to negative 300 something. So there we go. So now we have some nice shaky text, which is really cool, gives it a nice look. And I wanna go ahead and one last thing, I do wanna maybe do the same thing with the scale, because the scale is kinda of cool, but we have to change the value. So, on the first frame, I'm gonna hit I, insert a scaling keyframe, and now we have the scale values here we can mess around with. Hit paste, hit play. And I can see it kinda of stretches out a little bit, which is really cool. Um, and the same thing with the Y, change the offset, and then the Z, same thing, change the offset, and that's the phase. Oops. Cool. Now, I kind of want to make the scale values a little bit bigger. Oh, that looks so cool. I love that. So, we'll make the scale strength a little bit bigger. Um, that looks really cool. I like that a lot. Nice. So, with the X as well. Oh, maybe not the X. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Definitely not the X. Um, I, may, I went a little too far there. All right. But this looks really cool. Um, I do want to change it maybe from the white color now because it looks too interesting to just be like this, like this almost gray color. Um... Hmm, everything's just really, really bright, though, is the issue. Um, huh. 
So I have, I have on Fumbix still. Okay. Um, let's uh, let's let we can keep it on that. We can keep it on like a purplish like that. That's good. That's good. I like that. That's, that looks decent. We'll leave it on seven. And we'll leave it on like that, that purple look. Um, actually, we do a lot of purple. Screw purple. We're gonna do <laughs> we're gonna do yellow. We don't do enough yellow things on the channel anymore. Um, all right, cool. So there's that. That is that. Actually, what I want to do is I'm gonna separate these real quick. So on the the rim, this little like thing that goes around in the center, we'll make this really really bright yellow. And then this little front piece, we'll select that. Hit two over here on the material uh, tab. Then we'll change this to strength one, and we'll change it to an actual white color. There we go. All right. Yeah, that looks much better. Actually, wait. That's kind of cool too, actually. I can't lie, but we'll change it to a white color. It'll be white. Okay, nice. So we play this now. You can see that it's nowhere near as bright. It looks much better now because the only thing that's glowing is the gold piece. It looks very, very cool. And the cool thing about this is that you can still change all of the letters because we didn't, uh, we didn't mess them up. So you can literally change it to say, um, "Yo." <laughs> you can literally say "Yo." So that's really cool as well. Oh, I missed. Okay, well that's cool. Um, this one as well. There you go. And. Now it says yo, which is very cool. So I hope you ladies and gentlemen enjoyed today's tutorial. Hope you learned something new about creating a cool glowing intro, I suppose it was, in Blender. Um, but yeah, I'll see you in the next one. But until then, bye-bye.